All right, we're here in Nakona, Texas with Trey. Yes, sir. From Finolio Boots. And how long have you been a boot maker? Uh, I've been getting paid for making boots for going on 20 years now. It It'll makes be, it sound like that's been a little well, longer than that then. Well, uh, my grandfather uh, was plant superintendent uh, of the boot company here in town. Uh, when I was growing up, after he retired, my father became the plant manager of the boot company here in town. Uh, so I've been around it my entire life. Uh, when it, it shut down in August of 1999, my father started the Itsy Bitsy Boot Company. And uh, that was out of a little shed by his house. And I helped him out there and everything while I was in college. Uh, but I did not officially start coming to work, getting paid uh, to make boots until uh, what will be 20 years ago next spring. Okay. So it's a long time you know a little bit about boots. I, I would hope so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I think I do. What's, what's your role here? Uh, I am the plant superintendent, so I'm overall production uh, if, at Finale Boot Company. That includes, you know, ensuring our quality, uh, our production output, uh, and maintaining employee relations, things of that nature. I also work on all of our sewing machines and help them out working on the heavy equipment as much as possible. So Finolio has just hit my radar, well, in the last three months and more specifically in the last couple of weeks because uh, my thing is I like American-made boots and yes. hats and that's, you know, they fit great for me. They, you know, the attention to detail is there. So to find out you guys are here right in Texas. Yes, sir. Making, making boots by hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just a win-win. I got to check it out. So. Um, you know, we did see your boots yesterday at um, NRS. Uh, that was the first time I had a chance to, to take a look at them, but we were pressed for time, so I, I didn't really get a get a chance to you know, go over it. And um, so, I'm just anxious to to take a look at your boots. Okay. How long has uh, Finolio been in business? Uh, I believe James and his family took over. I, I want to say in 2013. It may have been 2014. Uh, the the time frame exactly gets a little fuzzy for me. Uh, They've been a part of this community. James and his family have for five generations. They have multiple businesses here. They're very, very family oriented uh, and they do a great job. We're proud to be working for them now. Uh, I apologize, I can't remember the exact date. No, that's though. fine, absolutely. With that said, uh, in Nocona, Texas, and just north of here at Spanish Fort, uh, boots of, cowboy boots have been made in this area, in this town, uh, since the late 1880s, so. What other, I mean, we have Nakona, Justin is, is local also, right? Yes, sir. So H.J. Justin actually started it all uh, at a, a place in, called Spanish Fort, just north of here. Uh, he sold boots to the cowboys while they were on the Chisholm Trail. While they were going up, he would take their orders. Uh, when they were coming back down and been paid, they could pick up their boots. Uh, when the railroad came to town, moved, he moved his production to the town of Nakona uh, after his passing at some point. Uh, his sons moved off and started the Justin Company, from my understanding, and his daughter stayed here, uh, Enid Justin, and she founded, Fino uh, excuse me, she founded Nocona Boot Company. Interesting. There, there is a lot of history in, in Texas in general, but uh, but in this area, yes, sir. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of great little little companies here that that are doing, you know, great things, American-made products, right here in Texas, and. Um, how many people do you have working for you here? We have uh, 27 factory employees, and we have a few office people, shipping departments, things of that nature. So we know at least one of your people has been doing this for uh, 30 years. Is it is it the same with most of them? Or are they mostly there, all? There's, there's a lot of them that have been at it for much longer than I have. Uh, the lady that runs my sewing department actually went to work for my grandfather the month I was born. So she's been at it 45 years. Okay. And still going strong and and a lot of the people uh, that work for me now work for my father uh, back in the day so I, I've been blessed it's made my job easy uh, to be handed a crew of very experienced very talented boot makers so this is not something where some guy just decided I think I want to make boots and I don't know anything about it but I'll, I'll try anyway this is this isn't this is the real deal yes sir this, this and, is the and real deal uh, James uh, the Finolio, that's one of the owners that was instrumental in getting it started in uh, Finolio Boot Company itself. He actually worked for my father at Nocona Boot Company, uh, either when he was in high school or right out of high school. So James was a boot maker before he uh, 
acquired the business. I'm sold. <laughs> Let's, they sound great. I, I've, I've held them in my hand. I've looked at them. And we're, right now we're going to check out your process. Okay. And, um, and we'll see what we think of that. But I really appreciate you having us in today. Yes, sir. I know it's been uh, it's been hot here, and well, it, it it gets a little warm. It's the end of your week, but we really do appreciate uh, you spending the time with us. Yes, sir. We're glad to have you here. All right, let's take a look. The, this is where everything officially starts in our process. Uh, we get tickets sent to us that will tell us what types of boots we're gonna make, how many pairs, what sizes, and how much and what type of leather is needed to make those boots. Uh, the gentleman that works back here will roll up the leather. He'll put it in these rolling carts here and it will go off to Lonnie, our cutter, and he will cut the boots for that job. Right now, Lonnie is cutting ostrich leg. If you wanna come in closer, you can see it. Our clickers, just big hydraulic press machines. We use these steel forged dies to cut out the patterns that we need. Right now, he's cutting the centerpiece to Vance on an ostrich leg. Hi, Lonnie, how you doing? I'm Joe. How long have you been making boots? 40 something years. There you go. All right. So he'll take each individual piece of us. The, the legs do obviously come off of uh, different sides of that ostrich, so he's going to sort through them and find the best match that he can and then go back and cut all of them. You cut one at a time or a big stack at a time? No, one at a time. The, the die will deflect if you try to cut more than one at a time, and your pieces won't be the same size. Okay. And as particular as we are, their scales may not line up, so you may need to be in a different place on this one than you're going to need to be on the next one, like the top of his die may need to be in a different place from, from piece to piece. Are these standard production boots? Or are they special order? Or? These are a standard production boots here, going okay. to the store. Okay. So Rosa is back here. She's cutting the linings uh, for her job. She's already got the vents and the fronts of the tops cut. So this is gonna go on the inside. Hey, Dora, do you have anything you can bead? Anything you can bead? So after it's been cut at this stage, uh, Dora has sewn the leather beading to the top lining of the boot. After it's sewn in place, she'll take it, we'll glue these two tops together. It's going to be the outer piece that you will see at the top. And as you can tell from that top, our lining is cut one size larger than our outer piece. That's so we can make sure we have a nice straight line. We'll come back down and trim all this excess off so that we're nice and straight on there. When Dora is done, has all of these together, first we'll go into computer stitch. These computer stitchers is where we put on the fancy patterns on the tops of the boots. And this is also a spot where we allow people to uh, personalize their boots. So if you don't want just a regular stitch pattern, we can put on you know, somebody's logo, their brand, their name, their company logo, anything like that. Hey, Lionel. When they come out of computer stitch, they end up over here at Desiree. And Desiree runs a double needle machine for us so that our two top stitches are perfectly parallel. And she's gonna sew around the top of that boot, finish making sure it's all sewn together correctly. This 
does uh, you do a front and a back here the same thing or uh, so uh, this is a front uh -huh. and this is a back you okay can tell the difference between the i see things. yeah you have the tongue versus the, the yes, heel sir. cool ZRC runs uh, both these department pre-fit and fitting. Uh, right now what ZRC is doing is she is going to be stamping the style, size, and ticket number on all the boots. Oh, so this goes on the inside of the this uh, shaft, okay. And uh, they're going to separate for a little while from their work order, so this helps us know also, for, you know, for our own sake, which boots go with which ticket. But also helps the customer if they need to reorder. They can say, uh, you know, if I want this exact boot, it was this style number, this size, that sort of thing. Okay. From there, the boots start taking a little more shape. Becky has glued the vamp onto the top, and now she's going to sew around it. Is there anything special about the stitching for? We do them one at a time instead of stitching our linings in so that when, when Becky gets done, you can see it right over here. We use this uh, bobbin that she's just sewn it in. We use that as, as a guide so that when we put in our lining, uh, we can line it up with that because the next two times she sews, she's going to be blind and can't see what's on the bottom of the boot. Okay. And that's why we do it separately like that. We use 46 weight poly thread so it's stronger and it won't just break off you know we can melt it if we need to and set it in and Carmela sews on all of our counters uh, a lot of people have gone to using uh, Celastic man-made counters yes. we still use veg tan counters that's awesome so uh, that's big, made out of the same material as our outsoles that's a it's a big topic right now on, on the counter stiffness of the counter and mm -hmm. looks and, great so after Carmela will float this uh, hard counter on, she'll go back, glue the soft counter, and again, two more rows, uh, one hidden, and then two visible rows. We've got three rows at every point holding it together. We come out of here. I'm sorry, they got it caught up over here, guys. We do use this uh, saddle machine, this cylinder arm stitcher, and that's what closes our side seams together. We sew them inside out. This is a solid leather uh, side welt that we use. Uh, no PVC in our side welts or our top beatings. They're all genuine leather also to avoid cracking and, and wearing out prematurely. Uh, once that's sewn together, wrong side out, we'll take it over here and turn the boot right side out. Uh, you can tell that uh, boot turners can be bought. This one holds a lot of uh, history for me. My father and my uncle built this one back in the early 80s. Uh, I'm a third generation bootmaker. I haven't mentioned that before, but uh, so my grandfather ran a boot company here in town. My father did, and now I do, even though I'm uh, no ownership or anything like that. That's very cool. So this little guy makes the job a lot easier. That. Hey, you lizard. Yes, sir. And this is um, this is the actual side welt here. Yes, sir. Material? This is this is our side welt here. It also comes from a family-owned business in Fort Worth, Texas. That's, Texas leather trim. That's awesome. Uh, we've been my, my father and grandfather did business with uh, Greg Cooper's father. So very very happy to continue on doing stuff with them. Once the boots are side seamed, 
Uh, we'll line them up with the last and the insole that they need that's tacked on. Uh, we use a solid leather insole also. Again, no art artificial or man-made materials. And then uh, the gentleman behind me will shape these boots over the last by hand. And uh, all of the last, these are all the same last, just a different size, is that right? The, to... These on this rack are all the same last, uh, but in a different size okay. and different width possibly. Uh, but we have, I do believe we have nine different toes available and we go from a size five A to a 17 double E. Now, that's not available in every single toe, but we, we while we don't fit uh, custom fit and stuff, we got a large size range that we can accommodate. What's, what size clay wear? 17. 17 double E. Mm -hmm. he's, we, he's, we he's been trying to find a. I've got, I've got one pair of, of last from back in the day. I'm not positive who they came from or whatever, but they are a 16 8 A. The longest, skinniest foot I've ever heard of in my life. It's never been used in my life. Though. Okay. So are these your own custom lasts? Or, yes, sir. Okay. And do you make those in-house or do you have No, somebody? no, we have that sourced uh, use uh, several different companies that we work with to make our last. Some of them come from Jones and Vining. Some of them come from uh, Orma out of Mexico. We do develop our own toes, send them the models, but they, they make the last. Yeah. Now, do you do recrafting as well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In, so that's in-house? Yes, all, all, if we, uh, if you buy a pair of Finoleo boots and, and you wear them out or they wear out prematurely, if it's something that we determine was premature and shouldn't have happened, of course that's on us, we'll fix it. Uh, if it's just worn out and you want a new sole because you love those boots, we'd be more than happy to have you send them in and we would resole those boots for you. If the guys get the boots wet and then they pull them around the last, nail them in place, Pull a string around the toe to take any uh, wrinkles out of that toe, and then the boots are allowed to dry. How long do you dry the boots? Two to three days, depending on humidity, heat, stuff like that. They're also set under a fan the whole time. So as a boot maker, what is your take on folks, you know, getting new boots and wanting to push them out and putting them in water? There are cases when I guess that happens, but, but we would really like to put you in a pair of boots that are comfortable from the word go. All right. I mean, uh, there is obviously some break in time to boots. They don't fit like tennis shoes. They're not as flexible generally starting out as tennis shoes are. So when you hear the terms breaking in a, a pair of cowboy boots, uh, there should be a, a minimal amount of heel slip when that boot is brand new until the outsole and the insole start start moving with your foot and then that should go away. If they're so tight that there's no slip to begin with, they're probably gonna rub blisters on your feet. You're not gonna lie. So. It's a good looking rough out. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that is one of our top sellers, if not the top selling style, this one and this book next to it. Uh, I just did a review on a Mexican rough out. It wound up going back. Really? So, yeah, I, I, I was not happy with uh, the quality, but. Yeah. So uh, once the boots have been lasted and they've went through their drying stage, uh, we will inseam them. So we're not a flat last company. We don't just uh, single bond our soles on. They are stitched on. There's a cavity. We sew through the leather, through the insole, and that in turn is what your outsole is gonna be stitched down to. Uh, this is a pair of uh, genuine rattlesnake, you know, diamondback rattlesnake boots. That's, uh, that's hard to come by right now, I understand. That is, that is very hard to come by. I've been trying by. to get a pair for about eight months. That, that is uh, definitely struck while the iron is hot if you hear that somebody's got rattlesnake. Yeah, you still have some? Uh, well, we have a little bit left, yes sir. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, after they have been inseamed, we'll put in our shank, we'll put in our bottom filler, then we'll lay whatever sole the customer has ordered in. What is that filler? Uh, this bottom filler is a very hard rubber neoprene. Uh, it adds some cushion to the boot, but its main job is to keep the sole from collapsing since we do have that cavity there where we've sewn them together. Okay.
Uh, we still offer a, a traditional leather sole. We use an 11 iron sole, it's a good heavy one. Uh, we can double stitch, single stitch, either way that the customer wants on any toe we offer. Uh, but if you're not in the market for a leather sole boot, we also sell uh, what we call Ranch Tough, is a gum rubber sole. It's very leather in appearance looking, but it, it's got good durability and good flexibility. And it has become extremely popular for us. Do you do any sole savers on the uh on we the have experimented with it, but at the right now we, we don't offer that. Talking about sole savers though, we do offer a half uh, leather midsole. So if you want that outsole to be a little beefier, last a little longer, uh, we can do that too. We still use solid uh, brass tacks and lemon wood pegs to peg our shank in on our leather sole boots. After the boots have been uh, pegged or stitched, depending on uh, the type of outsole, uh, we come through, we sand the sides of them, trim them in even closer, and then we put the heels on. That would happen here? Yes, sir. Uh, that's an inside nailer, so we will glue the heel, we glue the outsole of the boot when we stick them together. Uh, we'll put them on that machine, and the nails will come up as the hammer comes down, so you'll be standing on the nail heads instead of the points of the nails. So these are your heels here? Yes, sir, and we use uh, leather stacked heels on all of our boots. That was my next question, if it was uh, a leather or leather board. No, it's, it's leather stacks. Cost a little more, but makes a lot better heel. For sure. And if y'all want me to, I can heel scour a pair for y'all. Sure. Uh, it's gonna be really loud, but uh, I certainly don't mind. Uh, this is our newest uh, color in elephant that's available. I believe that's called uh, Electric blue elephant. I've got so two pair is, of elephant and I love elephant. That's, that's one of our new styles. Uh, as you can tell, we leave uh, the outsole large in the back so Spurge. that we can accommodate any heel that somebody wants. If they want a spur ledge, if they don't, uh, this particular style of boot calls for a large spur ledge. So we're gonna fire this baby up, put it on. It, this boot will travel back around and uh, the, the heel will get sanded with uh, 120, 180 sanding paper to smooth that up more. And then we will work even more to blend it into the sole. And when you finish your boots, do you use a, like a heel or an edge dressing or will you? Yeah, our most, and... our most popular one right now is a, uh, a wax, wax field transparent ink. So it gives the boots a nice, rich look. So this is a transparent ink? It's transparent, I should say stain. I didn't okay. say ink, okay. but it's transparent stain. Uh, it's a wax-filled stain, so that will help repel water. And 
add to the life of the outsole and the heel. Wow, that, that color transition. Just like that. It's awesome. Looks great. Okay. Uh, after this point, after the boots are inked, uh, we will wash and condition all of our boots. They do get dusty, uh, but not a boot goes out of here that does not get cleaned off, uh, conditioned up, and we're ready to go. All right, we so I got a question about conditioning. There's, there's a lot of debate on the best conditioners to use. Um, in, in the, you know, in uh, as consumers. And so a lot of people are using, you know, Bic4, just yes. standard Bic4. What do you use to condition? So we, we buy from a company uh, called uh, Midwest Chemical and they make a specially formulated uh, product for us. Uh, I think that James and them have looked into possibly selling that at retail. I think it's a great formula. It doesn't add as much waxy buildup back to a pair of boots as Bic4 does. Uh, a lot of problems with people's boots, some people uh, tend to over condition and they don't get it all off and you get that white look uh, from all the waxy buildup on there. Ours doesn't have as much of that in it. So it's friendlier to the, to the leather if you condition your boots a lot. Okay. Cool. But it fortunately it doesn't have an actual name, ah, except you. for boot conditioner. That's fine. <laughs> it's just, just curious to find out what uh, you know the manufacturer actually recommends but Big Four is, a, is an excellent product, it is. Uh, after the boots have been nail checked, uh, we're ready and they've been inked, washed and conditioned, uh, we do put a uh, memory foam type insole in top, on top of our leather insole. Uh, that's to add a little more cushion, also hides the nail heads and the wood pegs that we do have in our boots. Now, is that removable or is it? Yes, it is removable. So if you, and it can be requested not to be put in. If you prefer and, to wear a boot, so this is what I found. Uh, if you prefer just, to wear a boot without a, any cushion, uh, we also have solid leather sock pads that we put in. So I've found that if you buy a boot that comes with a an insert, yes, sir. you generally have to buy maybe the next size up. So if I, if I wear a size 10 and I want to wear your boots without an insole, am I going to need it like a, a nine and a half or how, how, how's the fitting work? Uh, we generally run larger than most other companies. So that means that a lot of times you will wear a smaller size in our boot compared to other people. There also is, is not as much uh, conformity to size in the boot world as there is, let's say, as there is in the shoe industry. Everybody has their own last. Everybody fits a little different than everybody else. Uh, we tend to, like I said, run a little bit larger. So in our boots, I only wear a nine, but in some other companies' boots, I would wear a nine and a half. It's good looking boots too. Well, thank you. Is that a blue is, rough out? Uh, it's actually black. Oh. Uh, black rough out. They're just kind of been through it a little bit. They look uh, good, you know. That, uh, but like this, is, this is our like newest that. toe. It is the one toe. Uh, that one is completely, was completely developed here uh, by uh, James and Caden Finellio and myself. And we do actually make these last here. They're older last that we are refurbishing into that toe. So that's, that's probably my favorite toe. Um, I like that and the French toe. Yes, sir. So those are my two favorite, I think. And so uh, from, from this point, we steam and we tree all of our boots and then we inspect them and put them in a box. So you do have a wide square? What, um, yes, sir. You have wide square. I saw a snip over there. Um, uh, this is our, our one toe. Uh, you can see it here in mm -hmm. this burgundy rough out and down there in a black full wheel. Uh, but we also have, well, it's our 17 toe, but it is tr traditional, your father's cowboy boot from the 1970s. So just that fairly sharp round toe. Uh, we offer a 20 toe, which is considerably rounder than that, and then an eight toe, which is an extremely round toe.